Hi everyone, this video is to go over about how you can create a VPN connection between two different locations, um, either um, point to point uh, or a road warrior type setup when you have a CGNAT internet service provider. Um, one of the popular ones and the one that we've titled in this video is Starlink. Um, where you have um, your your all your traffic, all your your, your home network uh, or your office network behind their services like this, where as soon as it leaves the router, it gives you one IP address, and then the address that's seen over the internet is a completely different one. This will work well for traffic for your average web surfing or uh, web utilities. But the moment anyone tries to connect from the other end, they can't. And the reason they can't is, is you, if you can see here, this IP address, this laptop in this case, or machine here, would not be able to route to that. It doesn't, there's no route for it outside of, um, outside on the internet. And also, um, if you look at this IP address, even if you were to go to this guy, this guy's servicing hundreds or thousands of different clients on the inside here there's no route to tell it where to go and that's where we run into this problem so the clients that we have um, they are not using the business version of Starlink they're using the residential version and um, as of this video they don't officially support uh, a VPN server a VPN service uh, between their their internet service providing and uh, road warriors or point to point, um, so we had to come up, go ahead and come up, come up with a solution that would work for them. Um, a little disclaimer here: um, these IP addresses and the ones that you'll see in here, they are not any of our IP addresses. We have essentially pulled these. We're making them up in this case. Uh, I know that Starlink has this subnet and they've used it or IPs in the subnet, also this one, I've seen this one come out. Um, and uh, this IP address, we literally, you know, we pulled it out of uh, thin air, but it is a valid IP address, I just don't know who it belongs to. <laughs> uh, so if you go to connect to these, I don't know what you're connecting to, I don't suggest it. Um, but anyways, let's move forward here. Uh, if we look here, this is the solution that we're talking about. This is the change here. So the, the blue lines are what we were showing before in the last slide, which is up here, which is just the regular flow of traffic on a CGNAT ISP provider. The red line here is the solution we have, which is using WireGuard. WireGuard, in, in this case, we're not doing, for the purposes of this video, this is uh, more of an intermediate type video. Um, where we're using a Linux operating system for all the machines. Um, and if there's enough interest, we could definitely go look at creating a video that would show you how to do this with a Windows server or Windows clients, so a Windows 10, Windows 11. Um, but this is showing you how you would do this VPN connection to an individual machine. If you wanted to connect to the entire network, uh, that's outside of the scope of this video. That would be more, um, we would have to add there how you could do routing uh, either at the at the router level or at individual clients levels. Not, not that I was just going that road, but that's outside of the scope of this video. Um, so if you had an individual file server or if you were to try, if you were trying to get a remote desktop access to a desktop in the, in this network, this is where this would come in handy. Um, so as you can see, uh, the most clients that we notice that we inherit, they will usually have an IP address that's in this subnet, 192.168.1. something or a 10.0.0.0. something. Uh, so, uh, I went ahead and I did a VPN IP of 10.10.120.2 or .0 24. So you have 254 different addresses that you can pick from. Uh, and it's not a, uh, a subnet that's normally used. So if you're creating a VPN connection like this, just make sure that your local address, so anything that's in behind the Starlink connection and the VPN are different. If you do that, you'll be fine. Um, and then the other thing is where, uh, where, is you gonna, where are you gonna put your WireGuard server? You need to put this at a location where you have a static IP that's publicly accessible over the internet. A uh, popular solution that we would promote and we would say is a good idea is to use one of the big cloud providers, something like AWS, 
uh, Linode, uh, Azure, and there are a whole bunch of other ones there uh, out there that you can use. They will give you a static IP and you don't have to get a big honking server. You just need something that has say one CPU, one gig of RAM, and you're fine. And that usually will cost you about 20 to $25 a month, something like that, uh, which is a very cost effective solution. Um, if you're concerned about speed, just remember Starlink, their network will usually top out at around 110, 150 is probably the highest I've seen megabits a second. And the average cloud provider for, for a, a cloud server will give you about a gigabit connection, which is way faster than what you would need anyways. Um, so just something to keep in mind there. Um, so all that being said, I'm going to go to the next slide here and I'll, sh I'll give a live demonstration of what that network looks like after I'm done going through these slides. Um, Let's go down here, and this is just for reference up here, but here's the the meat and potatoes of what that VPN connection would look like. So these are three, essentially three different configura configuration files that you would have. Uh, again, uh, these private keys and public keys, I made them for the, per for the purposes of this video. Um, if you're going to copy and paste this information, just make sure that you create your own public key and private key. If you're looking at the WireGuard documentation, it shows you how to do that. It's one command in the command line and you'll get those. There's, it's really not that difficult. Um, the other thing to point out here is the endpoint. The endpoint, I just put that in there. Uh, but of course, this would have to be whatever this WireGuard server is. Either it's an IP address or if you're going to use DNS, it's the DNS and then colon the port where, that you're going to use. And you'll see what that looks like as I move forward in the video here during the demonstration. <clears throat> uh, the other thing to point out so that everyone understands, what are these private and public keys? So the WireGuard server, when you create its public key or private and public key, uh, remember any of the private keys are to remain private. You do not share those with anyone. Theoretically, uh, you you know, put them in a in a box, uh, throw away the key or hide the key. It's only you that only you that should really know it. It's the public key that's going to be available to everyone, <clears throat> and the public key is created based off of this private key. Um, so when you create a WireGuard configuration, the first thing that you have to do is do the interface. You do the address. If you remember, like I said, my WireGuard server was going to be 10.10.120.0 network, so 254 different addresses. For the sake of um, the server, I decided to make it dot one. And then the port was 51820. That's the default port. And um, uh, as you can see here, um, the endpoint for all these machines, they're going to have a IP or DNS colon and then the port, so this would be 51820. Um, the other thing is that the private, the public key based off of this public will be the public key for the two clients. So if you were to put this into the command line uh, to generate a public key based off of this, you'll see, and you can run the command line to do it yourself, or the command itself, it'll generate this. So this is a good reference point for you. So this is what we put in at the client, so the Starlink network client, and at the road warrior and if you have 15 different road warriors the same public key would apply to them as the peer so the one that they're connecting to the same thing is what you need to do at the wireguard clients themselves you have to generate a public key and a private key um, we also need to assign them an ip so for the sake of this demonstration i did the starlink was going to be 10.10.120.2 and the road warrior was going to be 10.10.120.3. Okay, um, so when I show you the demonstration, you'll see I'll be able to ping these two addresses. I could even um, SSH to them. I can, if you have a Windows machine, you can do remote desktop to that IP. That's what you would connect to when you're actively using this. If you're not doing any sort of, uh, um, if you're not doing any sort of routing to the local network and again that's at a scope of this video uh, the other thing to point out is that on the server this is where you tell it um, what are my peers so the peers will be 
the Starlink uh, client on the, uh, on the Starlink network, which is this guy here, and the Road Warrior over here. And that would be this one here. So when I go over to my uh, uh, my console sessions, you're, I'm going to open up those files. You'll see this all this information cut and pasted from this page in there. Uh, minus, of course, I will be blurring out the endpoint because that's something I'm using for my testing. But this would be what your server would be. And um, uh, of course, I'm keeping these public and private keys because it's just for testing purposes. Again, make sure you create your own. If you're just testing, you can definitely use these. Just make sure you don't use that in production. Um, moving forward, this is the installation instructions on a Ubuntu either server or client. Um, the steps are more or less the same on all of them um, with only one major change on the server, which is that we would have to, if, if, if um, <clears throat> if we're not using a firewall on the cloud providers um, uh, as a service and we're having the server fully exposed, you would have to open up the port um, within the firewall. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and do up, get update and upgrade. So this is to make sure you get the latest repository and you download all the patches for this machine. It's good to do this out of the gate for any Linux machine when you first get it. Just make sure it's up to where it needs to be. Unless, of course, you have some sort of uh, policy as to what patch level you need to be for everything. But again, at that point, you're out of scope of this video. Um, the next thing you want to do is we want to go ahead and install WireGuard. So apt-get install-y WireGuard. UFW, again, like I said, that is optional. If you have a um, another firewall or another solution that you're using for securing that network, this, is, this won't apply. But if you are using a uh, cloud solution that... Uh, exposes this machine fully to the internet, you're gonna need a firewall. That's what this is. And then we would have to go ahead and VI or nano the configuration file. So this is where you actually put that file in question. So then that would go into forward slash Etsy, forward slash WireGuard, forward slash, I named it CGNAT underscore VPN, but you could call this whatever you want. Just make sure it ends in .conf. And this will be important further down the, in, in this area here. Uh, but I'll get to that in a moment. What do you put in these files? Well, that's page two here. So on the server, you would take this. This would be what you would need. On client number one, it would be this. On the road warrior, it would be this. Okay. So you would put that into that config file. And this is, again, that optional step I was talking about. If you have this machine fully exposed to the internet, um, you would enable the firewall. And again, there's different firewalls you can use for ease of uh, purposes and just to make this a quick video. UFW is good enough. It will work just fine. Um, I set it to allow SSH. Again, it's a, it's a very popular uh, way to connect to Linux servers. Uh, you don't need that. And then the other one would be to allow the port for WireGuard. This would be important if you're using UFW. Um, so again, I, I chose 51820. You can name, you can make it whatever you want. Just make sure it's UDP because that's what Wireshark uses. Then we move forward to actually enabling the WireGuard itself. So systemctl enable uh, wg-quick at, and if you see here, this is the name of the configuration file. I named it cgnet VPN. So that's what I use. Uh, when I enable it, this will make sure that it starts on boot every time and systemctl start wg-quick at cgnet underscore vpn. This is what starts the service. Once it's going uh, to view it, you can just type wg. You should see an output and you'll see that when in the quick demonstration that I do. Um, if it shows any errors, um, you did something wrong in these steps. I already vetted these steps, I did this, so this should work. Um, just look at, it'll tell you what command to run to see what the status is. It's basically systemctl space status, and then this command here. Again, make sure that if you if you name this configuration file differently, you need you put that in here, and it'll tell you in that output what was wrong with your configuration file. Nine times out of ten, that's the issue. Is you you just miss something or you added something that's not supposed to be in there. Um, same applies to your clients. Uh, as you can see, the steps are more or less the same. Um, you don't need the the firewall stuff. Uh, especially if you're, if you're behind a Starlink uh, CGNAT network. 
and your road warrior same thing i assume that you have some sort of firewall already so you would have to allow that port um but that's really it there again if you have any comments as to whether you think i'm missing a step here that would make it easier for you guys to understand it please put it in the comments and we can definitely do follow-up videos or even revise this video with the information that is missing <clears throat> um, we ran these steps it worked just fine so um, let's um, I'm going to close the PDF file here and I'll put a link to this in the video from uh, our site you can download this as a reference guide um, I find it works just fine and I will give you guys a quick demo of all this so uh, as I was saying, if you want to see what the current status of the VPN is, you type WG. As you can see here, the connection is live. We're seeing some transfer. Um, the keep alive is 25 seconds. Oh, that's probably something I forgot to mention. Um, if you look at the WireGuard config, and you'll see it in the PDF document, the keep alive is set to 25. This is very important for a setup where you have a CG NAT because WireGuard will only connect when it needs to make a transmission of data. Uh, when you have both endpoints of publicly available over the internet, that's not a problem. They just open up their session and they close back down. But when you're dealing with a CG NAT, you want, the, you want both machines to constantly tell the, the WireGuard server, hey, here I am, this is my current IP, connect to me here. Um, and, and keep that session open. And so just make sure that that is part of that config. Again, if you're copying and pasting what's in my PDF, that's in there already, so that won't be a problem. So um, I'm going to system CTL, stop WG quick at, okay, so the VPN is stopped on the Road Warrior. If I go, this right here, like I said, is supposed to represent my Starlink network. If I do ping 10. 10.120.3, which is supposed to be my road warrior. As you can see, I'm getting no responses through ping. If I go ahead and start it, look at that, it came back to life. It actually will work at that point. Um, that's essentially the proof of concept that this works. Um, if I wanted to SSH to it, I could do SSH, uh, root at 10.120.2, which would be the IP of this machine here, which is supposed to represent my Starlink application server. If I press enter, look at that, I got an SSH response. Um, <clears throat> and that's essentially it in a nutshell. Um, this is the proof of concept. Uh, from here, you could really elaborate. If you If that was a web server, I could hit the port 80 or port 443 um, and then again if you're looking to do remote desktop if that was my Windows remote desktop server or my uh, my desktop itself I would just do a RDP connection to it and that would work flawlessly at that point um, if uh, you're looking to have access to other IPs on that subnet and if you remember I'm gonna go back to the PDF document here for reference um, if you were to try to connect to anything on the 192.168.1 network from out here, it won't work because you need to set up a routing table. For the purposes of this video, that's out of scope, but if there's any questions about that, uh, please let us know in the comments and uh, we can definitely look at creating a video that would show you how that would look like. It would be some minor changes to the config lines uh, or the config for WireGuard. We're looking at maybe one line per machine. Um, and then on the Starlink network, which is where I was saying that you need your own router, we would have to add a route. Um, that route is um, something relatively simple to do, but it is different by the router that you use, um, which is why that wasn't the, the re that was the reason why we decided not to create that as our first video. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, uh, please put them in the comments. We are more than happy to respond to anything that comes up. Um, as I've said before in the other videos that we've posted, um, if you found this helpful and you wanted to throw us something our way, you can definitely uh, send something to our Bitcoin or Ethereum or Do Dogecoin wallets. Um, it, uh, it does give us an incentive to keep making these videos. Um, and uh, of course, uh, we will continue looking to find other useful tips and tricks to put up on here. 
um, that could help other MSP providers or anyone who just wants to tinker. Thank you very much and have yourself a good day.